Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host Brian. We're going to do a special selection today which is where one of you tell me exactly what it is I need to check out. Today's special selection comes out us from Marcus. Hi, my request is the band Woods of Desolation and the song Anew. It's fresh, modern, hi-fi, high-quality, black metal. By the way, good work on your requests and analytics. Keep going. Well, thanks for the words of encouragement. Uh, definitely helps sometimes. Black metal, huh? <laughs> All right. Let's uh, let's dive into this. We got some hi-fi black metal. Six minutes and forty seconds of it. Let's see what's going on with Woods of Desolation. It's interesting because it's blackened for sure, but I get a lot of post rock out of this. Maybe it's because I'm coming off of something that was a bit higher production. This I would not call this hi-fi yet, but I think it is higher quality, higher production quality for black metal. It's, it's very compressed though. That snare, uh, dun -dig -dun -dig -dun, kind of uh, fill that we had, that's not blackened at all. This is interesting though. There's a lot of hopefulness in the music that is not coming through in the vocal delivery. But the song's very bright, uplifting. Is there a flanger underneath that compression? I 
Oh no. That's cool. That that's a neat effect right there. Yeah, having the uh, the old style or the old portion of the song get uh, manipulated and shrunk and twisted and contorted into a way that uh, almost, I mean, it became its own instrument, right? All the sounds got kind of blurred into this higher pitch sound that uh, became a a riff on top of the, the chordal guitar work underneath. The things people come up with, I mean, it just blows my mind sometimes. And that's, that's one of the coolest things I've heard. <laughs> um, what an ending. All right. So I had such a tough time figuring out the structure to this. It, consistently feels like one idea that we shift time signatures on or maybe tempos we're either running at full speed half speed or half of that speed <laughs> uh, but the harmonic quality doesn't really change much the chord progression is rather consistent through all six and a half minutes the vocals, I could find pretty much no discerning element. They were either on or off. That's a weird way to phrase it. They're, the vocalists were either singing or they weren't. Um, I couldn't find many um, landmarks, so to speak, in the vocal delivery that would have helped me differentiate any of those. Uh, it's very possible we had like a verse-chorus thing going on where a chorus was purely instrumental. Um, and so the song was a blur of vaguely different ideas and places, but none distinct enough for me to draw out a roadmap. It's like going through a forest and, you know, it's just trees everywhere. And sometimes you're like, oh, I kind of remember that tree it has like a semi-distinct, you know, part of its, uh, bark or something, but you're not really ever sure enough that you haven't gone through here. Or maybe it's just similar enough to something else you saw earlier and it's actually a different tree. You don't ever really know. And so the song ends up feeling linear to me, though there are sections that I'm like, oh, I kind of remember that. 
but a lot of it is just very well atmospherically i tend to view a lot of my the way that i sort of categorize sections in a track is a lot of the time harmonically vastly different time signatures you know if we shift from four actually just i guess any time signature change that isn't a half or a doubling because those kind of feel like tempo changes but when you pull in like uh you know go from a four to three or to a five or to a seven and you change up the pulse it changes the heartbeat of the section which is a pretty big change i, I can catalog that but stuff like this, where a lot of it is just a doubling of, could just be tempo. That's the thing. We I could probably transpose all of this in 4-4 four, four with varying tempos. Um, and tempo changes are not something that, I don't know, I, I don't catalog them for some. It's not like I don't feel them. Of course I feel them. They just don't seem important enough to me to be a distinctive landmark. Uh, which is interesting. I don't, I don't think I ever. I don't think I ever knew that. But yeah, I don't bookmark tempo shifts in my brain. Huh? I might have to. I think I found a. What is that a, a blind spot in the way that I listen to music? Critically, anyways. Um. And so I ended up listening to this. Not so much like I would black metal, but like I would post-rock, which is something I picked up early on in the video. It's more of a wall of sounds to explore a specific atmosphere. More so than a wall of sound to explore a specific atmosphere for a specific section. A lot of the more traditional black metal, and I'm going to call other black metal traditional. I'm not going to group this in here because this feels like black and post rock to me. It has black metal elements to it, but on the whole, it doesn't feel like a black metal song to me, which we're getting into nitpicking here. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we'll, we'll get on the topic a little bit. Black metal is a production thing to me. The production here is very blackened. Um, so uh, it's, it's, it's weird. But anyways, it does feel like an elongated exploration of a single section. We do have times when things change. When we cut to half time and the drums back off a little bit. Or we cut to double time and the drums go into you know, blast beats and, and 16th, note bass, 16th note bass kicks. Um, there is a bit of a groovier section in the middle, which is very far divorced from black metal. Kind of started to introduce a little bit of uh, groovy rock ideas. But it all happens in the drums. The vocals never really shift. They're just always screaming. And they usually scream over the same thing happening in the guitars, which is 16th note picking. Those two don't really change much. The bass, I barely heard any of. Maybe that was on me i don't know uh black metal black in production doesn't really do any it doesn't really help bassist much but uh i'll be honest i was listening to the guitars for a majority of this looking for something new and then i ended up not listening to any specific uh, element and just trying to engage with it uh, emotionally because it wasn't really changing much and i figured you know let's disengage the old analytical brain and Let's see if we can figure something else out. But I don't remember hearing any bass. So the drums are the only thing that really changes up throughout most of this. And I do appreciate it. But there's also... It leans into one of my big problems with black metal in general. And post-rock, which... I think it's just because we haven't had post-rock on the channel in a long time. I never really made the connection. They're very, they can be very similar. Let me put it that way. Something I came to the conclusion of talking with uh, Grimner last week. Maybe it was the week before. And we talked about this on the live stream a couple weeks back too, I think. Um, that I think my big problem with black metal isn't necessarily the harmonic quality, which... 
I tend to really enjoy, but it's the rhythmic quality and the rigidity of it. And so when the guitars play seven minutes worth of 16th notes and the drums play a majority of that seven minute time span of constant 16th notes, and the vocals come in and they tend to have a rigid rhythmic element to them as well, plus a lack of melodic elements in the vocals typically, which I'm pretty big on melody. I don't know if y'all picked up on that yet. It's a genre that I understand and have elements in it that I enjoy, but on the whole, I think is going to be a tough sell for me. Period. <laughs> Um, it's, it's not a style I think I'm going to grow to love. It's going to be one that I'm always going to have friction towards, uh, resistance towards. And the thing is here is the drums do shift from time to time and that should be good enough, but the things that they shift to are still rhythmically rigid. Instead of 16th notes, we have quarter notes or eighth notes, but there's no syncopation introduced to it. And I don't think that it really can. We've heard black metal with syncopated cymbals. The one that always comes to my mind is Ngwa and uh, their drummer, and he's just a beast on the cymbals, and there's something so infectiously fun about the cymbal work over the rigidity and extremity of the rest of the drumming. In fact, I'm probably going to go watch that live drumming of Exercises of Futility 5, I think it is, uh, like minutes... 130 to like 245 or something like that is just a joy to watch now that i'm thinking about it i have to go watch it <laughs> but putting groove into the bass kick and snare like you would for ska or punk i don't know that it would fit it would detract so heavily from what black metal is is which is a unification of sound to create this wall you can't make that wall with syncopation because syncopation inherently requires space you have to have differing amounts of weight for your instruments which are going to introduce weight to them on instruments that can't hold notes out which drum kits can't you hit it and you get the fade out. You get the roll off of the of the sound, but you can't hold the note out as long as you want. So your quarter notes are going to have air, space, dead time after them. Even if it's just a little gap, it's the reason that black metal uses the constant 16th notes. The reason that post rock uses the constant 16th notes is because even on percussive instruments you can still have that constant sound you don't have breaks uh, and so when you introduce something like this into when you introduce syncopation into something that requires consistency of sound you're going to have gaps within it. it's not going to work um so yeah i i would love to be proven wrong Show me, show me some black metal with some syncopated groove in it, and yeah, I might have a different opinion on it, but I, I don't think we've heard any outside of putting the syncopation on the cymbals, which works because it's over top the rigidity. But that's what was going on here. Even when we moved away from the 16th notes, there's still a heavy rigidity to the drums that emphasize the specific pulse based on the time signature without uh, any syncopation to change it up. It's consistent. It's constant. Um, and so the drumming, despite the variety of beats themselves, was still consistently boring for me. And I don't... I, got, I want to rephrase that. It wasn't boring drumming. It was boring for me. I prefer to have a bit more dynamic, rhythmically dynamic element to my, uh, to my drumming. So I guess at the end of this drumming section, which has gone on far too long, I think, I just want to state that I think the drumming in here is interesting. And I'm glad that much like the guitars, they're pulling in some inspirations from outside of black metal. Um, and I think it's really cool that they're doing it but it's still not my cup of tea, right? It's a personal subjective thing. That's where I want to land with that. Now, speaking about other instruments not doing what I would expect, 
the guitars are doing what I expect. Constant 16th notes, dyads, uh, crafting emotional atmospheres based off of chords between two guitars that are constantly playing endlessly. But their harmonic choice is different. A lot of black metal, probably because of where it stems from historically, is dark, angry, bitter, and eerie. Remember, black metal, from what I understand, started with a lot of uh, satanic connotations to it. Uh, and so having a darkness or an eeriness to the music makes sense. And so when we get something like this that is bright and hopeful throughout a lot of it, it is there's some melancholy to it. It is bittersweet in some places, but for the most part, I felt joy, elation of sorts. Uh, an overwhelming type of joy, one that would probably cause you to cry. You're so happy that you tear up, right? That's what I get out of a lot of this, especially at the heights of these progressions. But interestingly, because I think because it doesn't fit my typical atmospheric idea of what black metal is, it pushes me into the realm of post-rock, which... I think if you swapped out the drums in a lot of these places, in fact, some of the places with the lighter drums in it does feel very post-rock, especially when the vocals aren't present. Um, the vocals are definitely blackened and pull it back in that, you know, toward that end of the spectrum. But it is really cool to see this sort of tug of war between black metal and post-rock, at least how I see it. Granted, there are two genres that... Well, I have a lot of experience with black metal now, but I would not say I have a lot of experience with post-rock. Quite a bit of tracks, sure, but it's been a while, and nowhere near as many tracks as uh, I've listened to for black metal. So I, I don't want to say that I'm some sort of authority on either of them, really, but certainly not post-rock. But at least from my perspective, it feels like this tug-of-war between the two styles, and I think that's really cool. I love seeing anybody mix any kinds of genres and trying to find out how you can utilize the strengths of one with the strengths of another without really incorporating any of the negative aspects and trying to figure out where things bleed over anyways, which I do think there is a lot of cross-pollination between black metal and... Uh, cross-pollination is not the way to go with that, is it? Maybe? There's a lot of elements that cross over between black metal and post-rock. They do tend to go for similar vibes, just they go about it in slightly different ways. Uh, so it's just really cool to hear this where I don't really know where to place it. But like I said, a lot of this does kind of come off as post-rock to me, but the reason it doesn't always is because of the vocals and production. The vocals are just shrieks. They're they're shrill and and pained. They feel like they're they're tortured and it clashes so hard with the atmosphere the guitars are building it fits with the overwhelming elements that the 16th notes from both the, the drums and the guitars are bringing to the table but the emotion i get from the dyads is the complete tonal opposite of the emotion the vocals are giving me. And I'm really curious what our lyrics are going to say. Because musically this feels uplifting. And vocally this sounds like you're being tortured. And I don't know where that where those two ideas can line up. Where they meet in the middle. I, I don't know where that point is. <laughs> um, gloriously tortured. Um, ugh. So that'll be interesting to get into. But the production is the other thing that really gives me a blackened vibe. I had the wrong mindset going into this when I was told it was hi-fi. And I guess maybe comparatively to black metal, this is a bit on the uh, closer to the higher fidelity range. But there's still such a claustrophobic compression to it. The whole song feels like it's right here around me. And the heavy fuzz and distortion is not doing any help to making it have any sort of clarity to it either though i will say i could clearly hear all of the notes the dyads the chords going on the each of the drum hits was clear there's no muddiness to the low end on that um the vocals though were quite a bit compressed 
lowered in volume and shoved into the mix definitely has a bit of a lower to mid-fi feeling about that but like i said comparatively i guess this is hi-fi black metal but um i just came off of listening to some stuff that was very clearly produced and cleanly produced um and compared to what that was i probably should have had a palate cleanser before coming into this if i had known it was black metal i would have uh compared to that though this is pretty like i said low to mid-range production as far as fidelity goes it it goes for a grittier smaller sound so that is definitely black metal although i guess post-rock could benefit from it I don't think we've listened to any post-rock with low fidelity production. But depending on what you're trying to make in the post-rock genre, you could probably benefit from having something a little less clean. Um, I think I touched on everything. We didn't really get too much into the nitty gritty here. Like I said, the whole song just kind of blurs together for me, so I really could only pick at uh, larger ideas. But, uh, you know, maybe something will pop up when we hit the lyrics and I can make some some things connect. I, I feel like I have so many disparate parts of this analysis and usually I'm like, and all of this comes together to mean this. And here I'm like, it, it's a bunch of things I heard. <laughs> maybe the lyrics will help clean that up. And the vocal delivery kind of... It's not growing on me. I'll say that casually. But... I think it kind of works for the lyrics. The lyrics are positive. They're praising life. They're telling you that, you know, you really only have one life. And I use the word really. We'll, we'll get on that in a second. There's elements of rebirth in here, but it explores them in interesting ways. You have one life. Go out and live it as best you can because it is brief. There is positivity, there is celebration in this, but it also is told through the lens of just, you know, the utmost nihilistic grittiness. <laughs> uh, the vocabulary, I mean, uh, and it's kind of the same thing where we have this uplifting music told through this really gritty style of music. It's this blackened production with this uplifting post-rock uh, instrumental work. And so this clashing of beauty and gnarly come together in the lyrics as well. It's not just about, hey, you know, life is short, so live at your best. Kind of, kind of got like pop country vibes to it. But it says, dust gathers into form once again now and before. As all this was to dream again once more to gather unfold now and forever. As has been said once before, to be briefly if only momentary life passes by as fleeting as the golden falling leaves so gather unfold once more to be if only momentary as all will be but a memory so dream dream awake dream life away come back to re-begin again forgotten anew to dream life again as all this was and has been a dream anew and it's just like <laughs> the idea of being born again and knowing your time is short but not knowing who you were and nobody knowing who you were the idea of rebirth uh, we can't tap into our past lives and nobody can recognize us from our past lives we are forgotten again we are beginning again again we re-begin again as they state Life is the dream. It is the momentary portion of non-existence, which I think is beautiful and heart-wrenching. <laughs> to think about our the way that we view living and sleeping, right? And dreaming, right? So dreaming would be a small portion of your, your night cycle, uh, your dream cycle, your sleep cycle. There we go. You sleep... If, if we sleep according to generalizations of a third of the day, right? Eight hours of sleep. So it's a small portion of your day. It's a big portion, a third, but it's the smallest portion. You have two thirds of being awake and active. 
And then you only have a portion of those eight hours dedicated to dreaming. Because you have to be, I think, in REM sleep to dream, correct? Or some sort of deep sleep state. I don't think you can sleep in the first couple of states of sleep. Or I don't think you can dream in the first couple of states. So a small portion of the smallest portion of each of your days is dedicated to dreaming. If we take this idea of a small portion of your existence is dedicated to this other reality, this other state of being, your dream, dream worlds are not real worlds. This world of us living is the momentary aspect of our non-existence. And thus, it is the dream state of our non-existing being. I think that's a really cool way to go about phrasing that. But it also says, despite this being a cycle, and despite it being so momentary, go ahead and do this. Do it with everything you have. Gather and unfold once more. Even if it's only momentary, do it. Be. Exist. Uh, and it's very powerful message. Told in like the strangest non-uplifting language there is. Um, and yeah, I mean, it, it kind of works with the music. I, I didn't think I was going to get turned around on this. I didn't. The vocal seems so disparate from the music. And yet, I, I think I'm coming around to the choice. I think it works here. <laughs> Granted, like I said, it's it's abrasive to my ears on its own. But artistically, thematically, it works a lot better than I thought it was going to. Those are my thoughts on Woods of Desolations anew. What did you think of this track? Anything that stood out to you? Anything you'd like to add on to what I said? Correct me on. Give me your own perspective on. Let me know any of that down in the comments. Above the comment section in the description box, you'll find a link to Linktree takes you here. You can find my music, ways to support the channel, a link to the Discord server, and so much more. Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. Greatly appreciate all three. We do have a creator request coming up next. We They have been featured before, I think on creator request even, um, and I really enjoyed what they were doing. They're called uh, Sanguine Glacialis. Glacialis? Um, I gotta get, I gotta do a bit of a refresher on myself, go back and listen to the last track we did, but I, the name I have positive connotations with, so I'm excited to give them another look. It's their new track that came out last month. Um, if you're not interested in that though, we do have an album review tomorrow, live stream on Sunday for patrons. I'll try to have that out by 5 PM for everyone else. Hopefully it won't be blocked mere minutes after it goes live. What was the point of you ran checks on it. You said it was good to go. I released it and he's like, I ah, actually take two backsies. It's blocked. Um, and then I had to re-release it on Monday when I noticed it. So that was annoying. Hopefully that won't happen this time. Uh, and then Monday we'll start next week's theme, which is, uh, unexpected features unlikely features um when a band features another artist or another band that you just wouldn't expect being mashed up that way uh it's going to be real interesting i think all right until next time remember to be critical not cynical of the music you listen to and have a fantastic morning afternoon or evening whenever you choose to watch my videos